Hey, this is your girl Desiree, and welcome back to the Players Club. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks. Griselda Blanco was a Colombian queen pin in the cocaine drug trade and also in the Miami underworld during the 1970s through the early 2000s. And who has also been claimed by some to have been in business with Pablo Escobar's cartel. Griselda Blanco was born in Cartagena, Colombia, on the country's north coast. She and her mother, Ana Restrepo, moved south to Medellin when she was three years old. This exposed her to a criminal lifestyle at an early age, as Medellin was enduring years of its own socioeconomic, social, and political troubles. Blanco's former lover, Charles Cosby, recounted that, at the age of 11, she allegedly kidnapped, attempted to ransom, and ultimately shot a child from an upscale neighborhood near her home. Blanco had become an adorable pickpocketer before she was a teenager and managed to do well for herself in that field, and what may have led to further criminal proceedings. To escape the sexual abuse of her mother's boyfriend, she ran away from home at the age of 19, resorting to theft for survival in the city center until the age of 20. It is speculated that she may have engaged in prostitution to better support herself financially during this time, although she denied this. The godmother was a key figure in the establishment of the cocaine trade between Colombia and large North American cities like Miami and New York, as well as to dealers in California. Her distribution network, which spanned across the United States and Colombia, earned $80 million per month. Griselda and her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, first started a marijuana dealing enterprise in Colombia. In 1964, after divorcing Trujillo, Blanco illegally entered the United States with fake documentation. Under an assumed name, she would end up settling in Queens, New York. With her three children and second husband, Alberto Bravo, a cocaine smuggler for the Medellin cartel. They set up a thriving drug operation in New York City. However, nine years later, in April 1975, Blanco was identified by authorities and indicted on federal drug conspiracy charges, along with 30 of her subordinates. The family fled to Colombia to avoid conviction. She returned to the United States in the latter half of the 1970s to start a new drug operation in Miami. Her return coincided with the beginning of numerous violent public conflicts, notably hundreds of homicides per year that plague the Metro Miami area during the 1980s, a time known as the Miami Drug War. This was a period when cocaine was extremely lucrative and trafficked more than cannabis. The struggle by law enforcement to end the influx of cocaine into Miami led to the creation of CENT AC-26, a central tactical unit, and joint operation between the Miami-Dade Police Department and the DEA anti-drug operation. The godmother had three husbands and four children. She met her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, when she was 13 years old. She and Trujillo had three sons together, Dixon, Uber, and Osvaldo. All three were born before the godmother was 21. Blanco and Trujillo divorced, but remained business partners. After an argument over a business deal that went awry, Blanco had Trujillo executed. Following her marriage to Trujillo, Blanco married Alberto Bravo. After returning to Colombia, Blanco accused Bravo of stealing millions of dollars from the enterprise. And Bravo accused Blanco of letting her godmother nickname go to her head. Blanco murdered Bravo by shooting him in the head. Blanco had her youngest son, Michael Corleone Blanco, named after the character Michael Corleone from the film The Godfather, with her third husband, Dahil Sepulveda. Sepulveda left her in 1983, returned to Colombia, and kidnapped Michael when he and Blanco disagreed over who would have custody. Blanco paid to have Sepulveda assassinated in Colombia, and her son returned to her in the U.S. On February of 1985, the godmother was arrested in her home by DEA agents and subsequently charged with conspiring to manufacture, import, and distribute cocaine. The case went to trial in federal court in New York, where she was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years. 
While serving her sentence, she was charged with three additional counts of first-degree murder by the state of Florida. The prosecution made a deal with one of Blanco's most trusted hitmen, Jorge Ayala, who agreed to testify that Blanco had ordered him to carry out the killings, however. The case collapsed due to technicalities relating to a phone sex scandal between Ayala and two female secretaries employed at the state attorney's office. In 1998, Blanco pleaded guilty to three counts of second-degree murder and was sentenced to 20 years in prison to run concurrently. In 2002, Blanco, a lifelong cigarette smoker, suffered a heart attack in prison. In 2004, in light of her frail health, she was granted compassionate release from prison in the United States and deported back to Colombia. A newspaper article described Blanco as godmother of cocaine seeking to eliminate her competition. She displayed a brazen ruthlessness that plunged the city into a period of violence that became known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. She allegedly ordered numerous murders, many of which were committed by gunmen on motorcycles, a practice she was said to have invented. In addition, a number of the killings occurred in broad daylight, including a shootout at a local mall in 1979. Backed by such violence and a sharp cunning, Blanco became one of the world's wealthiest drug traffickers. According to reports, she smuggled more than three tons of cocaine into the United States annually, netting some $80 million per month. On September 3, 2012, the Black Widow and her pregnant daughter-in-law went to the Cardiso butcher shop on the corner of a street she frequently visits in Medellin. As she exited, an assassin on a motorcycle shot her twice in the head, killing her. The act mimicked the assassination style that the godmother practiced during the Miami drug war.